So it's not just the areas of the White House or the media or corporate America or even the law where the left feels its oats. They feel ascendant, but the backlash is coming. It's in the area of culture. They're going way, way too far in the culture. So, for example, Marvel, for some ungodly reason, for some reason that no one can comprehend, decided that it would be a wonderful idea to have ta Coates write Captain America comics. This makes no sense at all. Captain America's character is a character who was frozen in the 1940s and then reanimated years and years later. He's supposed to be a refugee from 1940s America. Rah, rah, that's why he's Captain America. Right? He's supposed to stand for all of the values of the United States. Among them are not. America is a deeply racist country plagued by, by, by structural injustices. America's rooted in evil and racism and cruelty. So to have somebody write Captain America, you might want to pick somebody who actually likes the country, who likes the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, somebody who doesn't think America is evil from its inception. You know, somebody who doesn't think like the 1619 Project. But no, Marvel decided it was not good enough to have ta Coates write the Black Panther comics. It, it, he had to also write the Captain America comics, which is nuts. Okay, ta Coates is a person who said in an interview with the, uh, with, with the New Yorker, I believe, he said that on 9-11, he sat on the top of his Brooklyn apartment building, slightly stoned, watched 9-11 happen, watched the planes go into the buildings and people throwing themselves from the 80th story of the World Trade Center down to their deaths, watched the towers collapse and felt nothing. That's how much he hates the country, ta Coates. Right? That is something he has said openly in inter- and that was considered okay because after all, there's been racial evil in America. And ta Coates, who's gotten extraordinarily wealthy and extraordinarily famous by talking about how terrible America is, he should write the Captain America comic. A comic. So on its face, this is an absurdity. It's, an absurd, it's like having Noam Chomsky write Superman. Right? Truth, justice in the American way, except that America is an imperialist invader that is constantly destroying countries around the world. Yeah, get Noam to write it. Makes per- Noam Chomsky should write Superman. ta Coates writing Captain America is the same thing. So it's stupid on its face. But it's not just stupid. What they actually allowed ta Coates to do here is portray... Red Skull, who's the villain in the Captain America. And people say, why do you even bother talking about the culture? Because more people in America engage with the culture than engage in politics. Culture is important. Culture is upstream of politics. And when you start mainstreaming complete and utter nasty and slanderous bullcrap about not only the country, but about anybody who disagrees with you into discourse that is meant mainly for teenagers, you know what you get? A worse country. They're going to push too hard here. They really are. So ta Coates put out This comic, the comic shows Red Skull recruiting people online. Uh, You know where this is going, don't you? Recruiting uh, recruiting people online, Red Skull, right? Who's a Nazi, right? Red Skull, as a character, is a Nazi who had his face burned off and he's he's now a mutant and all this. Okay, and here is the panel. It says the Red Skull. It is a picture of the Red Skull on a laptop. And it says 10 rules for life next to his face. Who do you think that's supposed to be? 10 rules for life. Could that possibly be uh, Jordan Peterson? Just to reiterate the point, just to make sure that you know it's supposed to be Jordan Peterson, it then says in the corner, chaos and order. Because, of course, Jordan's books are all about leading a, a finding order within the chaos, right? These are terms that Jordan frequently uses. And he talks about feminism. And so just to make sure, it says the feminist trap, right? The feminist trap. So you're supposed to know that this is, in fact, the, uh, that this is, in fact, Jordan Peterson, and not only that, he, he then has a reference to Karl Luger, who, of course, is a, is a deeply famous anti-Semite, viewed as sort of a model for Nazism in the pre-Nazi era, who's sort of the proto-Nazi. So the idea is that Jordan is a Nazi. Okay, that's absurd on its face. It's absurd. It's slanderous. Honest to God, it's, it's, it's disgusting because ta Coates is just a damned liar. So I know Jordan. I've read pretty much everything Jordan's written. I've watched many of his videos, as you have, I'm sure. The notion that he is pro-Nazi is insane. It is insipid and it is ridiculous. But the Red Skull is a Nazi and is actually Jordan Peterson in this comic, directed toward teenagers. And then there's this other conversation that happens about how Red Skull is recruiting people, in, in which Captain America says, it's the same for all of them, young men, weak, looking for purpose. I found the flag, you found the badge, they found the skull. He tells them what they've always longed to hear, that they are secretly great, that the whole world is against them, that if they're truly men, they'll fight back. And bingo, that's their purpose. That's what they live for. And that's what they'll die for. So if you tell young men that they have a purpose in the world, if you try to tell young men not to pity themselves and be losers, if you tell them to make their bed, this, is, this makes you a Nazi like Red Skull. ta Coates writing that in a comic book. 
Our culture, uh, the, the wokeness in comics, by the way, has been going on for a long time. Uh, Mar- uh, DC did this too. DC tried to make Superman into an anti-police figure. They had a Batman comic in which Batman was railing against the cops, not just the corrupt Gotham City cops, but like cops generally and about racial injustice and all this kind of stuff. Marvel has now trotted out a gay teen Captain America. And I was like, this is, this is not a surprise, but to have ta Coates mainlining all of this crap into like the Captain America comic does tell you something about where our culture is. And our entire cultural infrastructure has been taken over by people who are completely removed from the everyday lives of the people with whom they are supposed to be talking. Because your typical comic consumer is not somebody who believes that Jordan Peterson is the Red Skull. Just like your typical consumer of television is not somebody who believes that we should be spending our days fretting over how to turn girls into boys and boys into girls when they are young people, when they are tiny. And yet, this is the direction in which our culture is moving. By the way, there are some soft-hearted Republicans, and I shouldn't say soft-hearted, soft-headed, because they're not soft-hearted. In fact, what they're promoting here is really not soft-hearted. Soft-headed Republicans, Asa Hutchinson, the governor of Arkansas, comes to mind, who's thoroughly shellacked by Tucker Carlson last night on his show, as he should have been, because he decided that he was going to veto a bill, which was then overridden by the Arkansas legislature. The bill prohibited the use of transgender medicine on children below the age of 17, I believe. And he, he vetoed that. And he said, well, you know, we shouldn't be getting government involved in these areas. Oh, you mean protecting children from the destruction of their bodies by, by pseudo-medical professionals who don't know the first thing about what they're talking about and are simply following woke precepts with regard to gender? In any case, our culture has been promoting that. That's, that's why we ended up in this situation. So you have Sophia Bush, who says that, you know, we are, that, we, that if you don't allow child sex changes, that is tantamount to murder. Sophia Bush tweeted out, Voting rights are under attack. The GOP has launched over 250 voter suppression bills. Just a lie. They're trying to kill democracy. It's the new Jim Crow. It's against all we stand for. Okay, that's lie number one. Put that to the side because the left is always promoting the lie that Republicans are engaged in voter suppression, even though that is obviously not true. Then she tweeted out, hashtag trans kids are under attack across the country. AR just banned them from accessing health care. This is tantamount to murder. Kids will tell us who they are. It's our job to support them, not demonize or harm them. Um, Okay, first of all, the baseline notion that kids will tell you who they are is the biggest load of crap I have ever heard in my life. I have three children, all under the age of eight. If my four-year-old tells me he is a robot, guess what he is not? A robot. You know what it would make me if I said, okay, you're a robot? It would make me a deeply irresponsible and moronic parent. It is your job to civilize your child. It is not your your child's job to proclaim their authentic self to you at four and for you to take everything that they say super seriously because that's idiotic. You are smarter than a four-year-old. And if you're not, you shouldn't be a parent. But beyond that, this is just a lie. She says that Arkansas banned trans kids from accessing health care. No, Arkansas banned trans, uh, Arkansas banned all children from being experimented on by doctors using hormone therapies to block puberty and mutilate their bodies. That's what Arkansas just banned. But don't worry, if you watch our culture, this is not just a position. This is the position. It's a position that is parroted by the entire mainstream media which uses the exact same phraseology with regard to the Arkansas bill. The idea is that if you as a state don't allow doctors to practice medical chicanery on children, that if you don't allow doctors to mutilate children with hormone therapy, again, you don't know the long-term costs of using puberty blockers on an eight-year-old, that if you do this, then this somehow makes you a murderer, a murderer. Whereas presumably you're a better person If you say a seven-year-old is gender confused because we keep preaching to them in public school that they might be a member of the opposite sex and they don't know what that means because it doesn't make any internal sense. And also, they don't know what it means because they are children. So number one, if you're an adult, you shouldn't know what it means because it makes no sense. If you're a child, you certainly shouldn't know what it means because you're stupid and it makes no sense. And yet the idea here from our entire media and from our entire cultural sphere is that if you stand in the way of this, that you are somehow the bad guy. The backlash to this is going to happen. It is going to be tremendous. There will be a backlash to all of this. There'll be a backlash to the coarsening of our culture. I mean, the, and, and the left is begging for it at this point because what they want is the shock value, right? They want to push the boundaries. Did you know that every like on this video creates one additional leftist tier? Don't ask me why. That's called science. To take advantage of this amazing opportunity, hit the like button.